and I also uh, can you hear me? who's giving the talk. So please introduce yourself. Yep. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you all for coming. And um, yeah, in this presentation, I'll be talking about the work we've done on uh, building an efficient and expressive data lake compiler for program analysis uh, named Flan. Uh, I'm Supon. I recently graduated from Purdue, and this is uh, joint work with Angelo um, and uh, my advisor Tiak Romp at uh, Purdue. So yeah, so what is Deadlock? Uh, so Deadlock is a widely used uh, language for doing iterative fixed point computations in a declarative manner. So for example, uh, let's say we want to compute graph reachability, and uh, let's say we have our uh, graph represented as a relation uh, called edge that contains a set of edges. Um, graph reachability can be expressed using these two uh, data loop rules. Uh, what this says is that if there's an edge from U to V, um, we can say that V is reachable from U. And uh, the second rule says that uh, if there's an edge from U to W, and we have, we already know that uh, V is reachable from W, uh, then we can conclude, uh, derive the fact that uh, V is reachable from U. So how does these uh, rules uh, get evaluated? Um, so simple rules uh, that are not uh, recursive are trivial to execute. You basically execute the body of the rule, derive the corresponding facts, and insert it to the, the relation on the head. And uh, for recursive rules or mutually recursive rules, uh, these are evaluated until uh, we reach a fixed point. So for example, uh, the second rule of uh, the reachability example is a recursive rule. And uh, this will be executed until evaluated until we reach a fixed point uh, for the reach uh, relation. So the, the way the algorithm used to evaluate this is called the semi-naive evaluation. Uh, the idea here is that for recursive relations, you only consider the fact derived uh, in the, last, the immediate previous iteration. So uh, one of the promising um, applications of uh, data log is uh, doing program analysis in a declarative manner. So this is uh, really powerful. This is really powerful. Uh, for example, like an analysis written in thousands of, line of lines of imperative uh, low-level code can be written in like dozen lines of uh, data log. So this sort of shows. Um, um, yeah, the power of uh, data log in using uh, using data log in program analysis. So how does this work? Uh, so data log operates on relations. So what we do is uh, we have to first uh, come up with a representation, relational representation of the program. So let's say we have this program. Uh, for different kinds of instructions, we will create uh, different um, relations. And based on the program, we will populate the corresponding uh, relation. Then once we have this relational representation of the program, we write the corresponding, uh, the analysis logic we want to uh, perform uh, using uh, data log. So this is uh, for a simple points to analysis that computes like which variables um, would point to what um, objects. Once we uh, have this uh, analysis um, specified using data log, we can use a data log engine. Uh, to compute the output. In this case, it will compute the points to uh, relation, which contains the, the output of the analysis uh, we want to compute. And uh, so, yeah, so while like the, the pure, pure fragment of uh, data log is sufficiently expressive for a variety of cases, um, there's a growing need for extensions uh, to support an even wider range of program analysis. So for example, uh, this uh, strong update analysis, um, if you want to do this strong update analysis in a declarative manner, you need a data log system that has um, support for things like user-defined lattices um, and relations that can have uh, custom lattice columns and user-defined functions that operate on uh, user-defined lattices. And likewise, uh, there's a need for this. There's a growing need for things like user-defined aggregate, uh, aggregates and support for mixing uh, SMT constraints uh, with data log rules. And in general, like being able to interoperate with the full programming language, um, for example, like embedding some form of iterative fixed point computation in a, computations in a larger program. So what all this says is that your data log engine should be flexible. So taking these things into consideration, we have identified three main requirements. Uh, the first one is the flexibility. Uh, that's what we discussed. And uh, the second uh, aspect is uh, it should be fast, uh, the performance. 
And uh, another important dimension is that uh, we should be able to achieve both flexibility and performance while uh, while keeping the productivity of the developers of the Deadlock engines at a reasonable level. So these are the three uh, requirements we have identified. And uh, first, we look at uh, the existing sort of landscape of data log compilers. So in terms of performance, uh, they are at a really good level because uh, they do um, specialized code generation and they have like index structures tailored for data log and different optimization strategies. Um, but uh, one of the two, two of the areas that they are lacking is the productivity and uh, the flexibility side of things. So for example, um, some of the systems uh, rely on uh, stringified code templates uh, for doing code generation. So the idea is you have like large chunks of uh, stringified code templates that gets uh, concatenated and uh, that's uh, how the code is generated. And um, it's whenever you want to add new features, now you would have to modify these uh, code templates or write new, these new pieces of these um, code templates. So it's really, uh, in terms of maintainability, it's not ideal. And also some of these systems uh, have like multiple levels of intermediate representation. Again, if you want to add something, then you would have to modify these uh, multiple layers of optimization passes and like um, intermediate representations. So yeah, in this work, uh, we asked the question, uh, can we do better? Uh, so we start, started off with started off by building an interpreter. So we implemented a high level data log interpreter using high level Scala. So this is sort of like a textbook implementation of uh, semi naive evaluation uh, implemented using high level abstractions uh, in, in Scala. So with this implementation, um, what, what we get is a system that uh, has uh, really good productivity because our core data log engine simply has like high level textbook style uh, data log interpreter like code. And there are no multiple intermediate representations, no stringified code templates. But the problem is the performance is uh, significantly lower than uh, like the compiled counterparts. This is because there's gonna be a significant interpretive overhead. Uh, it could be in terms of like, because of the fact that we use generic data structures uh, and other, other overheads. So to address this performance gap, uh, we rely on, we look into uh, an existing body of uh, work that shows uh, the connection between interpreters and compilers. Specifically, uh, the first preliminary projection shows how to derive compilers from interpreters uh, via specialization. So specifically in our case, we use uh, this framework called lightweight modular staging, uh, which performs the specialization via types. Uh, so let's say, I'll give you like a simple example first. Uh, let's say we have this power function which computes n to the power b. So this is like a simple uh, implementation in Scala. And uh, let's say we want this function to be specializable with respect to different values of p, right? So we can do this uh, in uh, LMS uh, by um, annotating this uh, n as a rep type, which says that this is gonna be um, a part of the generated code. Um, so this is, uh, this basically, this does not get specialized and any like normal variables like ints will get uh, evaluated and will be specialized with respect to these variables. So um, as an example, uh, we have this annotator program and uh, let's say we want to uh, specialize this with respect to B equals five. Uh, then uh, yeah, we can use LMS to um, automatically do the specialization and generate the corresponding specialized function. So what does it have to do with data log uh, interpreter we had? So what we should do is uh, we have this interpreter and uh, we, um, yeah, so we basically specialize, we, we uh, make the necessary updates to the types uh, so that this data log interpreter can be specialized with, to, with respect to a given a data log program or a data, given uh, set of data log tools. And uh, so we can do this by uh, changing the type annotations as we so, so before. And now we can use the uh, our, our special, specializer LMS to generate specialized code. And uh, so this will be equivalent to uh, code generated by a, a data log compiler from a high level. And uh, so where do we stand? Um, 
Yeah, so in terms of productivity, we still uh, preserve the productivity levels uh, because we still have the, the same high level interpreter style code. And uh, now the performance is improved because uh, we do not have um, the interpretive overhead we had uh, and uh, because we are now generating specialized code. Um, and uh, yeah, so due to the interest of time, I'm not gonna go into detail. Uh, in the paper, we discuss uh, how we improve the performance further by having fully specialized index structures and like having multiple joint strategies and uh, optimizations to index structures. And uh, the key here is that uh, all these implementations and optimizations uh, can be done with minimal uh, sort of like turnaround time because our code is simply like an interpreter style high level um, color code which can be uh, easily uh, maintained. Um, so one of the aspects that is uh, still lacking is the flexibility side of things. For example, uh, let's say we wanted to add parametric rules or high order relations. So uh, if, if only we had the, the textual front end, we would have to implement all these features ourselves, uh, which pretty much boils down to building our own uh, language. So instead of doing that, uh, what we do is um, what we do is we come up with uh, an embedding in Scala. So on the left, uh, we, we have the, the typical data log syntax. And on the right, we have the same program written in our uh, uh, Scala embedding uh, for data log. So we use um, uh, functions to represent relations and we provide these uh, different kinds of operators to write, write rules. So what does this uh, give us? Um, so one thing is the Scala type system now will check for simple things like proper variable use in um, data log rules. And uh, now since this is fully embedded in Scala, you have the interoperability with Scala. And then uh, most importantly, we can use Scala infrastructure for things like polymorphic data log programs, uh, high order relations, uh, user defined lattices, uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, for example, if you wanted to do uh, a version of reachability program, uh, reachability uh, that is polymorphic, um, yeah, we can pretty much use uh, Scala infrastructure for that. So we can have like an int version of this or a string version of this. Also, we can have like, we can be, in this example, this edge relation is left abstract. So we can have a subclass uh, that provides edge, edge as an input, or we can have another subclass that provides this as a result of uh, another uh, computation or another rule. So yeah, so, what we get is uh, a performant, flexible system that is um, that is still um, having the the developer productivity we uh, we desire. So I'm short on time, so I'm gonna quickly go over the performance numbers. So we evaluated performance against uh, state of the art systems on three benchmarks. Uh, one is a simple call insensitive field sensitive points to analysis, and then uh, on one of the Doop benchmarks, uh, Doop is a Java points to analysis framework. And then uh, the strong update uh, analysis we have we saw before, which uses uh, lattice semantics uh, uh, to express uh, the logic. So for single threaded, um, so in our system, we have like different variants of um, um, index structures and like joint strategies. Again, this is uh, possible because, uh, because it's easy and it's, it's like faster turnaround time for different kinds of implementations. So for this particular benchmark, uh, our fastest performing variant is uh, 7.5 times faster than Souffle and uh, 2.1 times faster than Ascent. Uh, so yeah, so this demonstrated the effectiveness of uh, our generated specialized code uh, in the structures and uh, joint evaluation strategies. And uh, yeah, so here we evaluate the parallel performance. Um, yeah, so plan uh, our system remains fastest in absolute terms. Uh, across the number of threads. Uh, yeah, since I'm running out of time, I'll quickly go over this. Yeah, this is for the strong update analysis. Uh, again, here we see that uh, because our system is capable of uh, pushing the specialization further, we see significant speed ups compared to uh, other systems. Right, so in conclusion, uh, we have identified that uh, building data log engines that achieve performance plus flexibility uh, while maintaining the developer productivity as a challenging problem. And we show that uh, we have demonstrated that our approach allows maintaining the flexibility levels of interpreters 
while achieving the performance of uh, deadlock compilers. And uh, we have shown that our Scala embedding allows the additions of a variety of features with uh, minimal effort. And um, yeah, so in terms of like limitations and future work, uh, right now we, we, we only do like very limited amount of uh, like query planning. So we have plans to extend this uh, with like proper uh, query planning uh, mechanisms, uh, like cardinal estimates and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so thank you all for listening and thank you. Yes. We have a bit of time for questions. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. All right, thanks for the talk. Um, so if you have to specialize the entire data log engine every time you have a new set of rules, I'm curious about the impact on compile times and the development loop. So do you have a sense, for instance, if I add a new rule, like how, how many milliseconds or seconds am I waiting for the next version of the engine to be ready? Right. So, yeah, first of all, we sort of um, deploy this in sort of like a ahead of time manner. So what we do is we write the analysis uh, using data log, we um, use our system, it'll generate like a specialized version of C code specialized to that particular analysis. And then we would run this code on like hundreds of different programs that we want to analyze, perform this analysis on, right? So in, yeah, with regard to this, like this uh, this compilation does not happen in the, the critical path of the execution or the hot path of the execution. Oh, no, I, um, I understand. I'm saying when you're mm -hmm. developing yeah. the data log rules themselves, like how... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Right, yes. When I, yes, yes. Um, so for the for the experiments, like for these three, um, I think the maximum time of compilation was like 50 something seconds. Um, if I remember, like, yeah, it's always like less than 100, uh, 100 seconds for, at least for these cases. Um, yes. Okay, thanks. But yeah, so another another thing is we yeah. been developing the deadlock, uh, deadlock um, rules, we could alternatively use the interpreter itself because uh, the performance is not critical. Like you can have like a sample data set and then you can do your debugging on uh, on the sample data set, if that makes sense. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, another question now from Andrew. Hello, this is Andrew Appel. Um, mm -hmm. What about your interface to the garbage collector? Which, uh, if you're using Scala, I presume it's a sort of Java virtual machine garbage collection interface. And one thing I noticed about data log systems is that the demands of data log in its interface to the collector sort of work differently than the functional programming languages or object oriented programming languages might work. And I wonder if that's a performance impediment that you're using a garbage collector interface tuned for the you know, the virtual machine that Scala uses, which is not the same, which doesn't provide the same affordances that sort of native data log garbage collector interfaces might have provided. Right, right. Yeah, I actually, I think I missed, uh, I didn't explain it properly, but the way it works is we have the implementation in Scala and the specialized code we generate is actually uh, is going to be C code. And this is, Com executed completely outside of the Scala runtime. So we generate specialized C code from uh, our Scala interpreter, and then we can compile this and run this independently. So yeah, we are not interfacing with the, uh, the runtime of Scala. Okay, thank you. I'm afraid that's all the time we had for questions. So thanks again, Sapun. Okay.